Hello everyone, it's Andy here from A Media Games, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create. Do you know what? Instead of explaining it, I'm going to show you what we're going to create, and then I'll go through the details. That's probably a bit easier. So I'm going to click play, and you'll notice at the top of the screen we'll have a timer, and then at the top left of the screen you'll see that we have um, an event that's monitoring the timer. And when that timer expires, you can call an event of your choice, whether that be a bomb, uh, the end of a game. So for the best use scenario, as requested by a subscriber over on YouTube um, and Patreon, uh, is a squid game kind of style, um, I would say, event. So if the player is walking across a specific spot and they have to get from point A to point B, in a time limit um, and if they don't get into like this safe zone then they'll explode the head pops off I don't know whatever whatever you want happen to your player the floor opens up and eats them you know they get shot into space whatever you want to do so for this to work um, it's actually really simple um, I've, I've spent most of the evening kind of looking through some blueprints that were set up by somebody else um, trying to, who was trying to set up the code um, and have it so that a, an event dispatcher was called from a widget, but they struggled with trying to get that kind of to work the way they wanted. So I've had to redo most of the blueprint and simplified a lot of it to try and make it a little bit more user friendly, especially for beginners. So I'm not going to show you what I've made up here. I'm going to close these um, just because, and I'm going to start a new level because I'd want to show you from the start rather than halfway through. So let's get rid of this, all of this, and let's build it from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our content browser. So that's control space bar shortcut. <clears throat> um, in here, we're going to right click go to user interface and then widget blueprints. I'm going to click on user widget. I'm going to name this to, uh, something like squid game test widget clock thing. You know, that's a pretty good name, right? Um, I'm on version 5.3.2. So if it looks different for you and you're on a different version, it will still work. You can still follow along, but some layouts or colors or or pictures and stuff in the editor might <clears throat> look slightly different. So we're going to open that up, but not on that screen. I'm going to pull this over. Um, so in here, we go going to add only two things. So it's nice and simple. I'm going to try and explain it the best I can. Um, I'm trying not to cough. So. I figured out what my cough was. I'm not going to go into my own like personal medical issues, but yeah. So I figured out what the cough was anyway. So I might not have to edit out as many as I usually do. So in here, we're going to go to our search palette and we're going to get a canvas panel. We're going to drag and drop that onto our squid game test widget clock thing. You can <laughs> name this whatever you like. I'm going to drop that on there. So we have our canvas panel. So the canvas panel represents your screen resolution. So this is the top left corner of your monitor and then the bottom right -hand corner of your monitor, top right corner, bottom left corner, center. Um, and you can see here pixels, mine's 1920 by 1080. And you can see here when we go across, you'll see that by at the top left, you'll see that it'll go to 1920. There you go. And then by 1080 it's not quite getting there but yeah you, you see my point um so what we're going to do is add a text so let's get a text box i'm going to drag and drop that anywhere we like we're going to get the anchor and set it to top center <clears throat> you might be calling this in a blueprint actor as a kind of clock face on an object which will still work the same Excuse me. <clears throat> Let's have a quick drink. One second. Okay, so um, yeah, you might be adding this a different way. 
um, but the the principle behind it, the foundation, the fundamentals, all works out the same. It's all the same style code. So in here now we've got our text block, and we want that to be top center, where we are anchor is. So we're just going to click and drag and drop that there. Let's move it down a little bit. There we go. We want to make sure we name this so we know what it is. So let's click click up the top right side of our details panel and give it a name. So this is going to be our um, <clears throat> timer text. I'm going to click is variable because we want to alter this um, in our graph. So clicking and as a variable is basically just right clicking <clears throat> when you do promote a variable in a normal um, blueprint graph. So you're just creating a new variable of this type as a text. So we're going to go to graph and we want to keep uh, this one, event tick. Not big, not big fan of using them, but as long as you're only using them for small things and not lots and lots and lots of code firing off one event tick, it, it's usually okay. <clears throat> so we're going to create another variable. I'm going to click the plus button, and this one's going to be our time left, and then we're going to click where it says boolean. And we're going to change it to a float because it's going to be um, text or data, text data. And the next thing you want to do is you're going to hold control, left click and drag so we can get it. If you don't hold control and you drag it in, you just have to do an extra click. But if you hold control and drag it in, you'll get, you'll get it rather than have to select it afterwards. We also want the node we can move that out of the way. We also want a custom event node, so custom event, and this is going to be our timer. <clears throat> and bear with me one second. Okay, I'm back. And we also want a sequence, so hold S and left click, and that's going to go in there. Now, with our time left, we want to go into a subtract node. So subtract, which is the operators subtract. And in our B value for our float, we want to get world uh, delta seconds, which is at the top, our time. That's going to go into B, just like so. We want to clamp this so it gives us more real world uh, data values to work with. So I'm going to get clamp float, which is this top one, clamp float in the brackets. <clears throat> and then we want to, in our max, we're going to use our time left, just like so. So we should have our time left, our get world delta seconds, time left into max, and then this into the value for the clamp float. Out of our then one, we want to set our time left. So we're going to get a set, just like so. Out of our then zero, we're going to get a do once. So hold O for Oscar and left click. That's going to go above. This is going to go in here, just like so. I can double click the line for a reroute node to make it look a little bit neater. Our return value is going to go into time left. So this is where we're going to set this. And then out of here, we want to get time seconds to string. So time seconds to string, just like so. So this is what you should have so far. I'll leave that there for a second so you can follow along easier. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on. We need to grab our timer text because we need to set the text so we're going to drag that in and get and then out of this we're going to get set text make sure we get the set text with text in brackets so just this one here that's going to go into our set just like so and then this return value is going to go into our in text this is what's going to display our timer on our screen Okay, so now that that's done, 
we can do our event tick side. Our event tick is just going to be our timer event, and this is just going to constantly tick down the timer, You'll, as you saw earlier. So we're going to grab our timer event graph, track that on there, just like so. Um, so that's that done, and this now can be set up for our um, <clears throat> event dispatcher. So we're going to create an event dispatcher. This is going to be our bind event to clock timer. We're going to drag that in and call, connect that there. We're going to get a print string, print string, just like so. And then we're going to type in here, just so we can see it. You don't need to do this part. This is just so I can show you how it's working. So event and then bound from widget. So we can see how it works. So now that's the done. That's all the timer that we need. We can compile this. We need to make sure that we set the time down here. So we can do that here, set time. So let's do 10 seconds. Compile it and save it. Let's bear in one sec. Okay, so we can compile that and save that, and we can then go into our level blueprint. So let's go to our level blueprint. Uh, first, we're going to add a couple of things here. So let's do our shape so we can see where our um, safe zone is, just like so. Just like that. And where there we have our safe zone. <coughs> <clears throat> and then we're going to add a trigger box in so we can get an overlap event where we can use to set a variable um, for our player so if the player is overlapped then he's in the safe zone if he's not overlapped then he's not in the safe zone and you are going to die okay so let's go back into our level blueprint with our trigger box still selected so open level blueprint get rid of that because I'm not saved the level and, and we want in our level blueprint we want to use uh, let me begin play you don't have to use this you can you can trigger you can use the event begin playing to do the bind um, and then you can trigger it anywhere else using custom events so let's do a delay and this is we're going to use this to construct our widget onto the screen. So let's get create widget, <clears throat> and this is going to be our squid game test widget clock thing that I created just with you earlier. And then we're going to select that and place that in there, just like so. Once we've done that, we can then <clears throat> add to viewport. So let's get an add to viewport. Let's move this out a little bit because we'll be utilizing uh, this little blue connection here for our target and return value. Um, and then we want to bind, bind. And then if we go down, bind event to bind event to clock timer, which is the one that we created uh, here. Call bind event to clock timer. And that's what we're calling out of this. So find event to this one that's the one we want and then we're going to connect that here just like so let's move that down double click reroute nodes make this nice and tidy let's move this up a little bit okay so on event begin play after a two second delay we're going to construct the clock onto the screen so we're going to create it bring it into existence add it to the viewport is the player viewport which is basically an, a posh way of saying the, the, the monitor screen so we're going to add it into the viewport for the player <clears throat> so we can physically see it and this then is going to bind the event so this is kind of like this confuses a lot of people a bind an event isn't the event itself this is basically just saying okay the the event is now ready to be used and the event that we're going to make is going to come off this delegate pin so we're going to do custom event and i'm going to name this one time is up 
<clears throat> and that's going to go into there. Oops, if I connect it properly. There we go. Out of this, we want to get a set timer by event. This is a better way than using uh, event ticks. And then we can connect our delegate pin into here as well. So when this gets called and bound, this this time is up will play. This then will loop through. Um, spare me one second. Okay. Um, so this time will we'll, this this event will then loop. So we can set it to looping, and it will constantly keep checking the time. So point. Let's do every. 0.5 seconds, yeah, that should do. Out of our widget, which is our return value, so whatever you place in this class, when you drag out of your return value, you have access to your variables and whatsoever's in your widget. So when we drag out of here, we want to um, get time left. So get time left, just like so. Move this down here. Let's double click here for a reroute. Straighten that up, move this one out. And then we're going to get a branch. So let's get a branch, just like this. And this is going to be uh, equal. And that's going to go into our condition. This is going to go in here move that back a little bit and we want it to be equal to zero so when the timer is at zero we want the condition to be true so then we can kill player but if the player is in the safe zone when the time hits zero don't kill the player so we can do a second branch which we can do a test but let's show you this working first so let's get a print string and then we're going to do that there. Timer at zero. And then we're going to get another print string. And this one's going to be timer still counting down. So compile. <clears throat> so technically, this should, let's make sure it's all right. This should work now. So let's just go into the game and you see at the top of the screen, the timer will tick. And if you look at the top there, timer still counting down. Five, four, three, two, and top left, time at zero. So we now have control and a way to control the outcome of when the clock reaches zero, which is really good for many use cases. This could be um, a bomb planted like uh, Counter-Strike kind of style. It could be uh, exactly how the person who requested this wanted it for like a squid game kind of style scenario. Uh, red light, green light kind of thing. Um, you could It could be a platformer um, or, or any, any kind of, any of those use case scenarios. But this will work um, with custom events. So you could create a custom event, uh, wrong thing, let's switch each round. So in your level blueprint, you could create two custom events and you could just like you do here, if I drag time is up and get the function. So here's the custom event, here's the function of that custom event. So you could create another custom event. <clears throat> so let's say you had a door on a timer and this is gonna be door close. So you could create a, a custom event and then you get the function for that out of true. So let's say, for example, this is kill player, then do the kill player code, then you do kill player out of true. Um, obviously, we're not killing any player right now because we're, we're nice. So we're just going to carry on with the code. So what we're going to add is we're going to add a safe, safe zone. So we've got our print strings here and we've got a second branch. So both of these 
are going to go into, well this is going to go to nothing, this is going to go into our second branch. Our second branch is going to be our defining moment, whether or not the player lives. So we've got our trigger box, we can go into our level blueprint, and we need to add, let's add it here. So go collision, overlap, and then in here we can do other actor, we could do cast twos, we could do other actor has tag, um, but for this case scenario we're just going to use a basic simple trigger box with no cast twos or anything like that so it's going to overlap any actor um, we're going to create a variable um, is in safe zone and we're going to drag that on there and set that to true if the player is in the safe zone <clears throat> the timer hits zero and it's true then he lives if it's false, he dies. So that's going to be the condition. So let's get a print string. And this is going to be well done, you live. And this one is going to be too bad, you dead. Okay. And I'm going to set this one to red and set the duration to four i'm going to set this one to blue now we'll do we'll do green and we'll set this one to also four so we have two print strings here we have another condition set up this does not have to be print strings you shouldn't use these unless you're doing development so this is just a debugging tool just to see how code works um so now that you've got that set up we can compile that and we can go in and we can see how this works. So I'll leave that player there, top left. You can see timer still counting down. We've got five seconds to go. Three, two, one, top left. Too bad you're dead. I ain't in the safe zone. I'm now a dead boy. Okay, so let's try this again. But this time we'll go into the safe zone. So time is still counting down. We've got five seconds. We're running for our life. Indiana Jones style, last second, I'm in the safe zone. Well done, you live. Because I'm in the safe zone, I'm overlapping, it's playing a different line of event. So you can see here how this is working. We have event begin play with a two second delay. Event begin play is anything that we want to start when the game loads in. We have a two second delay. This is gonna create the widget. This is then gonna add it to the viewport so our player can see. We're then gonna bind the event so it's ready to be played. In here, in our widget, when we have our timer and our sequence, it's calling. So when this, <clears throat> when the, when the timer appears on screen, this is gonna be called once. So let's set this to like a, bluey color light blue and you'll see how this works and we're going to put that to five so compile this is when it's being bound so you'll notice if you look at the top left top left event bound from widget okay so that's how that's working we're bound bounding the event here when it's constructed on screen so when the widget appears at the top of the screen that's when it's being bound, event bound from widget, okay? If you try to do it before, if you try and do this before the widget exists on the screen, it will cause an error, it won't work. It has to be either the moment it's constructed and, and, and visual to the player, or after, so a delay at the time of construction or a delay afterwards. Um, I hope this video helps. Um, I really, really would love to see the uh, use case scenarios for this. If people come up with some really cool ideas, please show me over on Discord. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it for any bizarre, strange, odd, worldly reason, then it's, it's your prerogative. You can dislike it if you want. But yeah, if you like it, like it. If you dislike it, then dislike it. But help me out by subscribing to the channel. I do these videos to help you learn. And obviously, by subscribing, you're supporting me back for supporting you guys with all this help. 
So I appreciate all of you. Stay safe. Take care. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye for now.